We really wanted to start an ECMO program because our patients really needed this service. We're in a rural area of West Virginia. The next ECMO center is about three hours away. If we're gonna remain a medical center uh, to take care of most problems, it was a natural progression to be able to have ECMO uh, in our toolbox. Once the decision was made to have a program here, it started with not only getting the equipment with pumps and things that you need to run the ECMO circuit, but also training our staff. Continuing education for an ECMO program is probably one of the biggest things that you can continue to do as a new program. Medtronic has been very helpful in developing our ECMO program, not only with some of the training that we have to do, but also with just accessories and, and the machinery and all the things that go into the physical ability to take care of a patient. Definitely I want new programs to do it right, look at other programs who have been successful. We actually reached out to several different institutions to see how they started. And really teaching us not only how to take care of the patients, but how do you build a program? What's the administrative side of that look like? And what are sort of the logistics things that you have to think about in starting a program? From there, we develop protocols, formal training, competency testing, uh, quarterly training. Partner with facilities that are like your facility. Then you can see, oh, that selection criteria, is, that seems reasonable. That's like our patient population. There are so many nuances that go into an ECMO program that you have to have a deep uh, layer of support from many different disciplines. It takes a ton of specialties to really sustain an ECMO program. We place the patient on, it's usually not super eventful, and then it's the after. The management is hour to hour, minute by minute. Trying to make sure that everybody's on the same page and we're providing all the care that we can for the patient. One of the biggest barriers in adopting an ECMO um, program, um, particularly for physicians, is these uh, patients are very, very sick. And some of those patients, unfortunately, you know, don't live. And then you start to take a step back and question, well, why are we doing all of this if it's not helping? That was a big challenge that we had to overcome is to show that this really can be good. It'll be a good thing for these patients. When we very first started in the last five years or so, it, was, it started off kind of slow. Uh, initially, we only did eight to 10 patients and it's exponentially grown there on after. Um, right now, we're approximately running 40 to 50 patients annually right now. Every case we do is being evaluated during and after the patient is on and off ECMO. So we're continuing learning from every patient we do. Compared to the ELSO registry, our outcomes are very comparable for all the categories of, of um, ECMO patients that are monitored. Some of our outcomes are even better than the ELSO registry. It's the successes that make us stronger and, and we can see that the ECMO really has helped patients. We love seeing them come back and talk with us and seeing how well they're doing. I think the biggest thing that we learned when initially starting an ECMO program is your first timeline is probably going to be unrealistic. Oh, it's going to keep changing, but just don't get discouraged by that. Even through all the you know speed bumps that we went along the way with or, or setbacks, there was just unrelenting pushing forward. We must go forward with this. Our patients need this. We need this here at this institution. So to be able to take care of the people in our community and provide them the best care possible is very important and rewarding.